Landings are one of the hardest things to get right in Flight Simulator 2020. In this video, I'm going to share with you the number one technique that helped me improve my landings. So when you're talking about landings, there are two things you need to keep an eye on above everything else. The first one is the airspeed, and the second one's the glide path. If you get those right, there are good chances you're going to make a pretty good landing. Before we head off into the simulator, I did just want to quickly go over uh, airspeeds for different aircraft that are fairly popular in the game. I've listed the most commonly used propeller planes, at least for beginners. Obviously, if you want to use another plane, you can do that as well, but you'll have to look up what that landing speed is. So we're actually going to switch over to the simulator now, and I'll just explain to you a few things about how the glide pad works. Okay, so what I've done is I have loaded the game up and I've slewed myself into position on very short final here. And I'm just going to demonstrate to you what different glide paths look like. So in theory, you should be flying a three degree glide path all the way down to the runway. The problem is when you're just starting out, figuring out what three degrees is, is actually kind of hard. I struggled with this for a really long time and I only really only started to get a grasp on it very recently. The glide path I'm on right now is actually that 3 degree glide path that we're aiming for. At this runway it's actually really easy to know because of those lights on the left hand side of the runway. They'll indicate to you if you're on the right glide path or not. If you've got two white and two red you are right on that ideal glide path and you can just follow that all the way down to the runway. On the other hand, if I were to just go back into slew mode and take us down a little bit right there, you can see here that I'm actually below the glide path, and that's what the four red lights is indicating. It's telling me that I'm well below the glide path, and that if I continue at this descent rate that I'm going to miss the beginning of the runway. On the opposite side, if I were too high, I'll just go back into slew mode and get myself a little higher. There we go, and you can see now I've got four white lights, and that's telling me that I'm actually too high. So when you've got lights like this at your runway that you're landing at, it makes your job a little bit easier. But the majority of runways you're going to run up against in Flight Simulator won't have those lights. So you need some other way to be able to tell what your glide pad looks like. And that's where my trick comes into play. So when you're too high, the runway is going to look a lot longer. So you can see the distance between the start of the runway here and the end of the runway here is about, on my screen, it's probably about two inches. If I were to drop myself a little lower down, you can see that the runway's a little bit shorter now and it's got a slightly different angle to it as well. And if I were to go even lower below the glide path, like this, you can see the runway is getting shorter and shorter the lower down I am on my glide path. So that's actually how I do it. What I try and do is I try and keep the runway looking more like this, and I try and keep it with that perspective and that distance from start to finish so that I know that I'm always on that right glide path when those lights aren't available. When you're coming down towards the runway, you only need to make very small adjustments, either very small power adjustments or small pitch adjustments with the stick. When you do get down to the runway and you're a few feet off the ground, you're going to have to do something called the flare. What flaring means is that you're pulling back on the stick so that you touch down on your main gear first. It also helps to slow your descent rate and make the smoothest landing possible. Knowing when to flare isn't obvious, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to slew myself right onto the runway and I'll show you about when you should start thinking about doing a flare. Ideally you want to do it when you're about 10 feet off the ground, but figuring 10 feet off the ground in the sim is a little harder than in real life. So I'll just move myself into position. So to know when to flare, the easiest way is to start flaring when the runway starts to be the only thing you see out the sides of the cockpit. So I'll just slew myself a little bit lower down, around there, and if we go back into the cockpit now you see out of the sides all I see is runway. This is about where I would start my flare, which is about 10 feet off the ground. It's not exact, but for the purposes of the game it'll work pretty well. Alright, so I'm going to back myself up and get a little bit of altitude and we'll do a landing together, see how we use the pitch and the power like we've seen in previous videos to control our descent rate and our airspeed together. 
So the last thing to talk about before landing is to decide where you're going to aim for as you're descending towards the runway. The easiest thing to do is to just pick a point on the runway and aim for it. So what I like to do is I like to keep the front of the nose on the beginning of the runway until I'm close enough and I can actually see the runway. In this case, I'm fairly close, so I'm just going to point the nose right on these two lines here because I can see them. If I were further out, I would just usually be aiming towards the front of the runway there. Then as I'm coming down towards the runway, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to keeping the nose on that spot the whole way down to the runway. If I keep the nose on that spot and I keep the runway with the right perspective so it's not too squished and it's not too tall, we're going to descend at the exact right 3 degree descent rate the whole way down. Obviously small little changes either in pitch or in power are going to make small little changes in how accurate you are flying that 3 degree glide scope. It doesn't have to be perfect, it just has to be about right. The nose isn't on the end of the runway right now, that's because I just slewed the plane into position. I didn't fly it here. In theory, the nose should be a little bit higher. But once I come off the active pause, I'll just pull back on the stick just to point it at the right spot. So I'm just going to come off the active pause and we'll be off. There we go. So I'm going to aim the nose and now I'm just keeping an eye on that airspeed. Sometimes when you're on the active pause, it seems like it doesn't quite adjust to all the inputs that you've put in, so you do have to make some slight adjustments very quickly. So right there, holding that attitude, I had to add a little bit of power to slow our descent rate down because we were coming down a little bit too quick. Our airspeed's looking just about right, keeping the runway on that spot where I want to land. Sorry, keeping the airplane pointed at that spot where I want to land. And you can see those the lights are telling us we're a little too high and our airspeed is increasing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce power a little bit more so that we increase our descent rate. And I'll try not to change the pitch too much because we don't really need to change the pitch all that much because we want to keep our airspeed at 85. But we do want to come down a little bit faster because the runway is indeed starting to look a little long. So I've reduced power slightly always make very small adjustments. You never make a big adjustment because the plane takes a couple of seconds to adjust to whatever change you make. And if you make it too much of a change too quickly, you'll overcompensate. So now we're looking good. I'm going to add a little power back again so that we can slow that descent rate down a little bit. I let it get away from me a little bit there. So I'm just going to add a little bit of power so that that descent rate's a little bit slower. And I'm just going to hold that all the way down to my touchdown point. Now I'm going to switch my focus towards the end of the runway. And I'm going to keep an eye out for when to flare. So the runway's starting to be out the sides here. I'm going to reduce power. And now I see the runway, so I'm going to flare. And there we go. We are down on the ground. So that's all there is to it. It's really just a matter of watching your airspeed, watching your descent rate, using them together to make sure that you stay on the airspeed that you want at the descent rate you want towards the runway, and you should make a pretty nice landing every time. So if you have any questions, please make sure to put them in the comments section below. Otherwise, I'll see you next time.